Well, I'm here just above the Story Arms, which you can probably see behind me, and tonight I'm going to have a go at Penavan. Now, I used to do Penavan a lot at one time. I'd be up and down there all the time, three, four times a week sometimes, regularly over the back, down as far as the uh, Daribant Reservoir and back. But it's been a while, so let's see how we do today, shall we? I'm going to take up one of my favourite routes, which is up the Story Arms side, circle around the ridge line, and then up over Condy and on to Penavan. So with a bit of luck, we'll all have a nice walk. This is the path going up from the Story Arms car park. These gully things are to help with drainage and to stop the uh, the roads being, uh, or the paths rather, being eroded too much by rain. There's another gully by here. Uh, these are a bit dodgy in the snow because you can't see them. Right, I shall catch you up in a bit. We're a little bit of a way up the path now from the Stony Arms. There's uh, the view of the road and so on. That peak, where am I? That peak by there. Yes, I think it's that one. I can't see if the other one is hidden behind the trees. That looks like Fanfower. No, I think. No, Fanfower's a little bit further. Yes, that's Fanfower, I think. That's, yeah, that's Fanfower. This is. Uh, well, we can't really see it, but uh, Condy's up in front of us somewhere. We'll see it better as we get up. Well, I'm still going. I'm just about uh, coming up towards the first crest, which is a false crest, incidentally. Behind me, uh, yeah, that is Fanfower. You can see behind me. I don't know how well you can see that with the sun and everything. But Fanfower is back there. Uh, if I pan the camera around a little bit, that's Fanfower, the big pimple by there. There's a little reservoir down there, the name of which I can't remember. And the false crest is just up in front of us a little bit. So, if I can get the balance on this thing. Right, with a bit of luck we'll have a reasonably, I use the word stabilised route loosely. And I'm sweating like a marine on a spelling test. That's not what we used to say, but it's uh, cleaner. I don't think you can say what we used to say now on uh, YouTube anymore. But uh, there we go. And actually, when we get to the first crest, so that, that, I can't see the back of the camera, but somewhere by here, uh, that's Corn D you can see there, which is the first peak. That's our first target. And just to the right of the the, the pinnacle there, I don't know how well you can see it, on, I can't see on the back of the camera very well with the sun. But coming down somewhere here is the path that goes down to the Ponta Daff car park. I've started at the Story Arms car park. And incidentally it's evening, so if I'm lucky I'm hoping to get a sunset. So we'll find out. Now the normal route from this crest here is to drop back down into the valley and come back up the other side onto Condy, but we're not going to take that route. We're going to take a route that's one of my favourites. I'll turn this back around again. So you can see me. Hero cam, I wish. Uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, when we hit the, the ridge line, we're going to break off to the left and we're going to follow the fence line around until we come to a stile. And then what we're going to do is we're going to circle around the valley, keep into the high ground. As dear old John Wayne used to say, you got to take the high ground. Something like that, anyway. So, uh, if you stay on the high ground, every time you drop down, you have to climb that altitude back up. So if you stay on the high ground, you're saving energy and saving altitude, obviously. So that's the plan. Time will tell. I've, I've done that route hundreds of times in the past, I suppose, certainly dozens of times. So we'll see how well it goes today with the rather out of condition. Fingers crossed. Magic. See you in a bit. I don't know what you can see with that. Probably nothing. Oh, there's a birdie bear. Can you see him? I don't know how well you can see that from the wide angle on, but because uh, I'm shooting on the GoPro today. There he goes. Right, we're coming up to the ridge line now in a minute. I might as well keep the camera going actually. And. Uh, we should be there in a few seconds. I am definitely out of condition. 
I need to start doing a lot more fitness training. Let's get a wiggle on, shall we, as they say. Oh, that's not too jerky for you. Ah, there's the fence line down by there. See it where it starts to drop down? We don't really want to drop down too much if we can help it. And we certainly don't want to drop all the way down to the valley. So I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, we've reached we've reached the fence line. The gate is just down by there. Now I've come through the gate and turned left this side of the fence. Or you can just go along the other side of the fence. And somewhere further down there is a stile. It doesn't make much difference. I'm, I'm picking this route. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow this, follow the contour all the way around, basically. All the way around the ridge to up to about, where's, where are we? Where's, somewhere by there is Tommy Jones's obelisk which is a stone tablet, a sort of, it's an obelisk, to a young lad, Tommy Jones, who died up here. Tragically, the poor lad got lost in the mist and died. He was crossing from one farm to another. And there's the path you'd have to take if you drop all the way down. As you can see, dropping down isn't too bad, but you've got all that climb back up. So onwards and upwards, folks. I'll be back in a while. Well, we're working our way up the ridge line, there's my shadow. Now, as you can see, there's Penifan peeping out from behind Condy. Where are we? Right about there. That's Penifan in the back and Condy in the front. As you can see, we're up a pretty fair height. I don't know if you can make that out. There's a top of Fanfower peeping over the uh, hillside there. And uh, we've still got a bit more way to go before we circle around the ridge line that side. So it's uh, carry on regardless. I'm working the film titles in today. Well, Pick up a few more for the next time. Right, I've left the fence line now and I'm working my way across. As you can see, I'm cutting off the part of the valley. This, this ground isn't particularly good ground. It's got these quite large tufts, so you've got to be a little bit careful when you walk in. And one or two patches of this can be a bit boggy. I don't think it'll be too bad this time of year. We've not had a heck of a lot of rain in the last couple of weeks. So it's actually quite nice and soft underfoot. To be honest, patches, some of these patches would make a lovely bed to lay on if you were going to have a kip somewhere. Which I may well do later. But my plan is to circle across, cut across there, and uh, I've cut out the worst of the valley. Plus I get the view over Brecon when I get further over this way. So, uh, it's all part of the fun, really, isn't it? Ah, find a bit of a cheap track by that, so make it a bit easier. Hopefully. Even if I don't make it to the top, it's a nice day to uh, to not make it somewhere. Sounds like something Clegg from last the summer wine would have said, isn't it? And that's the path. Anyway, to tips with an hour later. Right, I shall see you in a few minutes. We're now quite well uh, across, across the valley. If I turn the, turn the camera around a little bit that way, you can see that uh, we're starting to see down the valley now. And in a bit, we'll be uh, following this reasonably well worn path here uh, up the other side and along the ridge line. Once we get up onto that ridge line, we'll be able to see the lake, the so-called bottom, bottomless lake, the other side, which people reckon has no bottom. I don't know why they uh, claim that these days, and I'm sure with a sonar and things we can measure it. But apparently it's a bottomless lake, and allegedly someone, I think it's a lady, rises up on a chair out of the, out of the lake, and it means something. I can't remember what the story was now. It was, uh, I don't know, a long time ago I heard it. Incidentally, I've never seen the lady at the lake. Or whatever she's called, I don't know, whatever it was. We'll see that now when we get up the top ridge line over there now. And then we got the, uh, that, uh, I don't know if you can see that nasty little line going up the side of Condy there. That is steep. And at the top you've got great big stone, for want of a better word, stone steps. They're not really steps, but they're great big blocks of stone, which is hard going on the knees. And they are really fun in the ice and snow. Right, onwards with our walk. Now that's 
one of those little undercuts I mentioned. So the wind is blowing across this one, but if this had the wind behind it, coming from say over there somewhere, uh, you could really get quite nicely out of the wind by that, tucked in under that. And up there in the background now we've got Condi, which has got the, the horrible path up there, which is hard work. And then we've got Penafan, which is the second left-hand one. And we've got that face, which is sort of pretty much classed as the sort of north face. It's pretty much more northeast, but as you can see, if you get it wrong and walk off that, that's pretty steep. So you really don't want to get that one too wrong. I'll pan the camera around a little bit. There's some more of those undercuts over there. And you've got parts of Breckenshire area down there. The mountains. I can't see the camera at all now. Fan Fowler is over there. And further back, then further over, we've got the Black Mountains behind that. And then we can pan around and sort of generally roughly more or less down towards kind of Cardiff anyway. And so it's uh, back to the path. I hope it's down a bit. With a bit of luck we should. In a minute, you should be able, if I've got myself navigated right, you should be able to see the bottomless lake. Incidentally, uh, I know my way around up here. I know this place. So I've been up and down here literally, literally hundreds and hundreds of times. I know my way around. I, I can find my way around in the dark. I've been up here in the dark. I've been up here in a whiteout. I've been up here in a blizzard. I put snow holes up here. I really know this area. But if you don't know the area, you do need to be careful. People do die up here, especially in winter. Indeed, a couple of SAS trainees and at least one experienced SAS soldier died up here. A man called Mike Keeley, who was one of the heroes of a battle called Mirbat, which nobody's ever heard of much. So if I come around to this path by here, there should be a path here, unless it's gone. It's been a few years since I've been up here, man. See what I mean about that face? And there's the lake. I don't know how well you can see that. Now the path is right on the edge there. I'm not going to go all the way down to that path. Because I don't want to... Can you see that? Yes, you can see the lake. And indeed I'm seeing what looks like a couple of tents there. Which is people camping when they're not supposed to. But that's not my problem. I don't think anybody's going to bother them. And that then is the sweep round of the Penavan, and there's the path. Now that path is getting closer and closer to the edge as the edge is eroding away. So I'm going to give myself a bit of uh, safety room, yeah? And I'm going to walk up parallel to the path. I don't really want to go whizzing off the edge if I slip. So uh, I shall pick you up at Tommy Jones Obelisk. I'm still on this path coming up. There's a path that goes down to the towards Brecon down there. As you can see, we've got a fair old sweep of the horizon here. Yeah? I'll sweep you right round. And then in front of me, I don't know if you can see those people. That's where the Tommy Jones obelisk is. But I have just heard a bloody great thud, like an explosion somewhere, which is probably the Army Rangers. We'll have a listen for a minute and see if we get any more. Yep, there's another one. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. No, I can't hear it anymore. Right, up to Tommy Jones Obelisk. I'm going to have a break there. Have something to eat and a drink. And then we'll pick up the pace up the horrible bit up to uh, Condé. Right, see you in a bit. Uh, this is one of the few pools that's reasonably permanent up here. So at the push you can get water from here, provided you obviously purify it and uh, sterilise it. But you can. And there is the Tommy Jones Obelisk, which we're going to take a better look at.
right thing. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to see that, but I'll, I'll read it out for you. This obelisk, obelisk marks the spot where the body of Tommy Jones, age five, was found. He lost his way between Cumgwilkey Farm and the Login, I think that is supposed to be, on the night of August the 4th, 1900. After an anxious search of 29 days, his remains were discovered September the 2nd. Erected by voluntary subscriptions, W. Powell Price, Mayor of Brecon, 1901. Isn't that awfully sad? A young lad that age. I can't see the bloody back of this camera. And there it is with Penavan and Condi in the background. So that's where we go and where that chap is walking up that path now. I'm going to have a wee drop of water. Let's see if I can see a mark on the lens as well. I'm going to have to sit down by her, have a drink of water, and I might have some apple. I've got an apple here to munch on. I might have that. And I'm going to uh, have a breather for five minutes. Drop the main big camera off. If you're wondering about kit I'm travelling really light, I've got a water bottle pouch and a molly pouch here, which has got a, my. Uh, what you might call emergency phone, not my normal phone, this is a, it's a long story, and this, I call it the moon phone, and I've got other bits and pieces in there, I've got a couple of ponchos and some emergency supplies and very basic survival sort of kit. I'm not expecting to be spending the night out here, but I'm, I've got enough kit to see me through if I do have to. And there's the obelisk. And pretty much Brecon is near enough behind it. Right, I'm going to go and have my drink. We'll uh, we'll meet up on the on the steep bit, and it is steep. Believe me, it's steep. It's not steep. It's vertical, but we walk away to that. Right, I'll see you in a bit. Do I keep saying that every time? Do I? I bet I do. I'll I'll uh, I'll start the video again on the steep bit. There we go, I've had my little sit down by Tommy Jones's obelisk, which is pretty much out of sight now. There's that bottomless lake again. The view of the valley and our sweep of and that is uh, what Chris Rea would call the road to hell, or the path to hell, I suppose it is. It's a nasty steep climb, but it is what it is. So let's crack on. I shall see you in a cloud of sweat and horse flies at the top. Oh, crikey, you're blind me. What is it Danny Glover says? I'm too old for this. Yeah, anyway, we can't do that bit, can we, because it's YouTube. Right, see you in a bit. Oh, for God's sake, I said it again. Right. This, as they said, is the hard part. But if it was easy, everybody would want to do it, wouldn't they? Oh, look at that view. Why wouldn't you want to do it? That's me puffing and panting like the Scotch Express. As you can see, I'm uh, a pretty fair way up. I don't know if you can see the second pool, which is down there somewhere. I can't see it on the back of the camera. Tommy Jones's obelisk is about there. 
and I've come all the way up here and I've still got that last, I don't know, 60, 70 metres to go. This path is uh, a little bit of a rough, tilt that back a little bit more so you can see better. That path is, this path is a little bit of a rough path at the moment here and this is really, really iffy in the ice. And of course being stones it makes it quite awkward for you to use crampons or anything on. So if I tilt around there a little bit, that ridge line runs along back in the general direction towards Cardiff, there's a reservoir down there. When we get further up now we'll be able to see Taliban Reservoir, there's Van Fowl over there. Turn around by Anna because this is on a bit of a steep step. And as you can see, this is a heck of a view. Right, I'm going to press on and I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when I get up to there now. Now we've come to the, uh, some people call them the stone steps, they got all sorts of different names. But, uh, Basically, just uh, a jumbled boulder field, small boulder field, really, I suppose you'd call it. And this is where the path gets a bit sketchy. In a couple of minutes, this is the best way to go for me, I think, this way. Uh, yes, it is going to be this way. about the jerkiness folks. Taliban Reservoir. I don't know if you can see that, there's Taliban Reservoir down there in the distance. And then there is Panavan, which is where we're going next. You do not want to walk off. As you can see, it's uh, downhill all the way. Very downhill. That is uh, a bad day out if you get that pear shaped. And there's the can on the top of Condé. Right, so now we're going to move over to Panavan. going to stop and have an energy bar and another drink of water and then I'm going to wait for sunset. Actually you can see Taliban Reservoir a little bit better now down there in the distance. This is called the Saddle. Uh, on, it's, known, it's known as this, I don't know if that's his actual technical name, but uh, and there's the bottom of the lake again. As you can see, this one heck of a view. So, right, I 
I'm not going to film all the way down these stone things because I want to keep one hand to steady myself. But essentially what we're going to do is just drop down this little bit of a path here and across to kind of hands my shoulder. Which is another name of that valley a bit better. the valley down there. And that folks is the summit of Panavan, the highest peak in South Wales. And a uh, very popular training place with the army and the SAS among others. Stone monsters, Bigfoot. They made my Bigfoot. There's no way to ride up here. Or more likely, somebody with an artistic bent. This means it's probably not me. Take it down a bit that way. Well, I'll be coming up onto the summit now. Forward to an energy bar and a sit down and another drink of water. highest point, the summit of Panavan. There used to be a trick point up here but they took it away after the man died up here and the uh, soldiers put a plaque on it to him and the uh, Ordnance Survey people took offence to the fact that they put a plaque on the trick point so they took it away. How childish is that? And over there, this cribbing up that that, uh, that peak, is it what it was there? That's cribbing. And there's a little pool down there. As you can see, there's a pretty fair drop off here. And what I'll do is I'll take us round in a bit of a 360, so as you can see, sweep us around the side. Yeah. 
know where you were. Because it wouldn't be at all funny to walk off one of these edges. I hope this wind isn't making, uh, isn't killing my sound too much because these GoPros are not actually that brilliant sound wise in the wind. So I'm just hoping you can hear me alright. There's not much I can do about it unfortunately because it's very rarely still here. Side, give you a decent view out over there. 